Yes, I'd like to see uh, Joanna Randall. I don't have an appointment, but it's important that I speak. Well, she's very busy at the moment. Can I ask Victor Bell? Can I help you? He wants to see Joanne. Well, my name's Dan Marshall. I'm a friend of Tara Wells. Oh. Could you tell her it's urgent? Well, you were still finishing high school, mate. This is a fresh approach. Well, if it's so fresh, why weren't we told about it? She's not in the script. But we've always used a model, and we always will. Joe, there's a Dan Marshall to see you. Well, I can't see anyone at the moment. Are we going to shoot this or not? Yes, shoot it. No. Okay. Who wrote the script? I did. That's what I thought. But he's a friend of Tara's. What? Dan Marshall. Who the hell's Dan Marshall? I am. I told you she was busy. Will you please wait outside? I'm trying to find Tara Wells. I thought you might be able to help me. Look, I'm sorry. I can't see you now. Lisa will look after you. One thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. Probably just hates women. $64,000. Congratulations. You're now taking part in the most expensive photograph ever taken in this studio. Right. We'll see what your boss has to say about this, mate. Huh. Miss Randall, I live up north. I was in Sydney. I went back a couple of days ago to find some information that I've been waiting on now for almost a year. Well, well, sorry, what did you say your name was again? Dan Marsh. Look, it was important enough for me to turn around and catch the next plane back. It concerns Tara. Lisa, would you ring Jerry Mars' office for me, please? How do you know Tara? In Queensland, 14 months ago. Can I speak to you in the office? Joe, he's on the line right now. Sorry, whatever it is, we'll have to wait. I'll take it in my office, Lisa. Now, look. It can't wait. Shall I call Jason? It's all right, Lisa. What about Jerry Mars? I'll ring back and tell Jason to start the shoot, would you? I'm sorry it's been a very difficult morning. In fact, absolutely chaotic. Would you like to take a seat? Thanks. Miss Randall, I know Tara trusts you. As much as she trusts anyone. How much has she told you about herself? Why? I love Tara. I've asked her to marry me. Really? She's been seeing someone else. I want to know who that is. Is that what all this is about? Is it Greg Marsden? Look, you seem like a nice man, but really, I never involve myself in the personal lives of my clients beyond a certain point. And what if I was to tell you there was no such person as Tara Wells? You mean Tara Wells isn't her real name? More than that. Well, she isn't Tara Wells. Who is she? Stephanie Harper. Stephanie Harper didn't die in that hunting accident. She was badly mauled about, but alive. She made her way to a clinic in North Queensland, where for a period of six months, she underwent a series of operations that completely changed her appearance. She then moved back to Sydney, calling herself Tara Wells. Oh, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Apart from a friend of mine who helps to trace people from the Queensland Police Department, you and I are the only ones that know anything about it. I swear to you, it's the truth. But Stephanie Harper was pushing 40. That's right. I'm a very busy lady, Mr. Marshall. If you can... Dr. Marshall. I'm the plastic surgeon who performed those operations. You can check me out with the AMA. I help create Tara Wells. I've never betrayed a patient's confidence. But then I've never been in love with a patient before. I also believe she's in considerable danger. So please, who is it? Greg Marston. Thank you. Please, not a word to anyone. Thanks, Joanna. Hello, 
it's over there. That's where we're going. day older. This is Miss Wells. Hello. Hello. I'll show you to your rooms. We don't use the upstairs anymore since the accident. Must have been a difficult time for you. I gather you and Mrs. Marsden were very close. Stephanie Harper was like my own daughter. This will be yours. Katie, I asked you to prepare Miss Stephanie's album. This one's got a better view. Doesn't need anything done to it. It's always kept ready. Lunch will be in half an hour. I don't mind Katie. She raised Stephanie. She's never liked me. I think she blames me in a way for Stephanie's death. If you want to hit it off with her, I wouldn't refer to Stephanie as Mrs. Marsden if the subject comes up. I'll remember. I'm in old Max's room. That away. I'm glad we're here, Tara. I'll leave you to unpack while I check the unloading. Christopher, isn't it? Who? Just put them on the bed, that'll be fine. Huh?
I was uh, just coming in to get those. Just leave them. I want to thank you for a lovely lunch. Katie. There you are. I came to see if you're feeling game. It depends. Fancy seeing some of the country on horseback? Well, I think I'm game enough for that. Should have seen Stephanie on King. She could ride like the wind from the time she was five or six years old. She never saw anything like her. King is her horse. No one's ever ridden him except her. No one's going to ride King, Katie. I'll see you outside when you're ready. OK. See you later. Sam! Sam! Sam, where the hell are you? Sam! Yes, Mr. Marston? Saddle a couple of horses for Miss Wells and myself, will you? You want me to saddle King? Don't be bloody stupid. This one's yours. Sam tells me he's gentle. What's his name? Pan. Didn't Max Harper call one of his companies Pan? You must read the financial page. On occasion. Thanks. Sam? No, it's okay, I'm fine. Stand up. Come on. I enjoyed that. Don't tell me you're one of those men who can't stand being beaten by a woman. No, what gave you that idea? You were pulling a face. I was not. You were? Well, like this. <laughs> Something like that. <sighs> How do you manage to keep looking so cool? You fit this landscape, don't you? Just like the fashion scene in Sydney. You are full of surprises. Well, we girls have to keep a few tricks up our sleeves. <laughs> oh, I like it when you laugh. You don't do it often enough. Women who play games with me make me very angry. It was your idea to come to Eden. I didn't fly all this way just to breathe the country air. You're hurting me, Greg. Wanting you and not having you is driving me crazy. Greg, you must know how I feel about you. But I... But what? Every time you go to touch me... All I can think about is your wife. I'm sorry, Greg, but I just cannot get her out of my mind. OK, the truth. I married Stephanie Harper for her money. Things hadn't been going too well for me. Competition was tougher. I had a knee injury. I've got guys like McEnroe coming up through the scene. My game just didn't have the edge it used to have. I met Stephanie at a charity do and she seemed to like me. I thought, why not? But I'll tell you, even with all her money, Stephanie Harper was strictly middle class. She was old. She was fat. She was boring. I had to be half drunk before I could make love to her. 
God, I hated that ugly bitch. You are everything my wife wasn't. I think we should be getting back. Thank you for being so straight with me this afternoon. You're the only woman I've met I can't lie to. I want you to know the kind of man I am. Even if it means I risk losing you. You haven't lost me. I respect honesty. Even if the truth is a little hard to take at times. Will there be anything else? No, that'll be all. Thank you, Katie. Thank you for a lovely dinner. She's still cooking for Stephanie. What do you mean? The meal tonight. It was all Stephanie's favourite dishes. Really? Yeah, she's a stubborn old bird. Nothing will convince her that Stephanie's dead. Well, she is all alone now, isn't she? Yeah, she's too old to be running this place. She'd be better off in a home in Darwin. Greg, Eden's the only home she's known for the last 40 years. Time doesn't stand still for any of us. Do you want to walk in the garden? Not tonight, Greg. I'm so tired. Must be this wonderful smog-free air. Do you mind? Yes. Thanks for being so understanding.
Ramir. I, uh, I was just uh, going through some snaps. You were in my room this afternoon while I was out riding. No, I wasn't. You left your sherry glass on my dressing table. Oh, that's right, I did go in. I wanted to see if I'd left clean towels. That's right, that's what it was. I, um, I wouldn't want anyone to think that I was a liar. No, of course not. Well, I'll leave you to your photos. Thanks again, Katie, for a perfect dinner. Good night. Good morning. I'm an early riser in the country. I know it. Such a lovely horse, I couldn't resist making friends with him. Did you think you could fool me, of all people? I knew you weren't dead, that you'd come back. I prayed to God every night. No one else I know sits a horse like Stephanie Harper. She's got a style all her own. A man as self-centred as Greg Marsden wouldn't notice a thing like that. You're making a mistake. It's you making a mistake, not trusting me. I understand all this, the change in you. But I don't care what you call yourself. You can't hide who you are from me or from yourself. I'm Tara Wells. All right, all right. You must have your reasons, so I'll shut my mouth. But I'll be here if you need me.
where is she? Where is she? And don't tell me she isn't here, because I know she is. I don't know what you're talking about. Liar. Who told you where I was? Does it matter? Where's Tara? There are a few things I want to say to her. Julie, for the love of God! God? God? What would you know about God? Cut it out. How many others have there been? None. You're a rotten liar! Julie, keep your voice down. Why should I? You afraid people might get to know the real Greg Marsden? I want to see Tara. She's not here. I'm sick of you, Jilly. It demands your stinking whiskey breath. You're disgusting. Are you in love with her? Yes. There's a plane for Pine Creek in the morning. I got one of the boys to drive you down. I don't want to hear from you, Jilly. I don't want to see you. I just don't want to know. Have you got that? You just get her out of here. And what if I don't? I'll go to the police. I'll tell them everything. I wonder how your female fans will react when they find out their darling of the centre court pushed his rich wife into a filthy swamp while he was making it with her best friend. Hmm? You're in it as deep as I am. Oh, the hell I am! <laughs> you should see your face! It was worth a plane trip just for that. Philip's the only one who knows about us. He won't do anything to incriminate me. But he still loves me. I'm not too fond of you. But the worst they can pin on me is being an accessory. I was going to say that you threatened to kill me too. If I said anything. Yeah. Just be your word against mine. Baby, let's face it. You had the motive. Remember watching a stallion being gelded? Made me sick to my stomach. Step out of line, baby, and you'll find yourself worse off than that stallion. Okay? If anyone's leaving here, it's Tara. Now, are you going to tell her, or will I? I think a church wedding would be quite appropriate, do you? Hmm. Might have to settle for a trip to the registry office. Oh, that's all right. Still in his money life could be very pleasant. <laughs> I saw Bill McMaster. Apparently he had Stephanie put a clause in the will. If I remarry, I don't get a cent. like to know. Said she had some thinking to do. Hey, no, this is Pine Creek. Get Sam and Chris to bring the Land Rover around. Ask them if they know where she's headed.
you two see Tara leave? No, Mr. Marston. Damn it! Take this. Here we are, girl. Come on now. Get up. Stay. Get up. Stay. Girl. 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 I'm fine. Yes, I'm You. you bitch. Hello, Jilly. Oh, oh, you knew I'd come. Of course. Pretend to be my friend while you're having it off with Greg behind my back, huh? Where is Greg? He went looking for you. He took a gun, so he probably shoots something. The kind of thing he does when he's feeling trapped. <laughs> I'm going to make a cup of tea. Do you want one? Listen, you come back here. I want to talk to you. Don't you walk away from me. Why did you tell me you were coming here with Greg? Why? You're entitled to the truth, Jilly. <laughs> Greg would have only lied if you'd asked him. So how long has it been going on? Quite a while. <laughs> oh, I see. It's all been a game, hasn't it? done to you. I want you to leave. <laughs> I don't think Greg would like that very much, do you? Bastard. He should be here. Well, you could always saddle up one of the horses and try looking for him. I hate horses. Anyway, I think we're in for a bit of a storm. How do you like your tea? Shove your tea. those carcasses well away from the house.
Go on, catch Who are you? This is private property, you know. Oh, I, uh, I tried the front doorbell. What do you want? My name's Dan Marshall. I'm looking for a Greg Marsden. He's not here. You're a mate of his. No, I'm not. I'm a friend of Tara Wells. I thought he might know where she is. His name's Kaiser. He's a killer, really. Hmm. Yeah, I can see he would be. He usually doesn't let anyone touch him at all. Oh, I think he recognised I was a friend. How long have you known Tara for? A little over a year. Where'd you meet her? My clinic in North Queensland. Your doctor? Yes. That's my sister, Sarah. This is Dr. Marshall. Hello, Sarah. It's a friend of Tara's. Come on, I'm freezing. That's her mother. Dennis, Tara and Greg. What about are they? They're at Eden, our country home. Eden? That's it, there. I met Tara the day she came here. But I'd seen her once before that. At my school. The day I twisted my ankle. When I asked her about it, she denied it. Kai's acted as though he knew her. I felt I did too. All day long, I had this feeling. What kind of feeling? That she was our mother. Dr Marshall, why was she at your clinic in Queensland? What was wrong with her? You said you met her about... A year ago. That was about the time my mother was supposed to have had her accident. I don't want to sound crazy, Dr. Marshall. You're not crazy, son. Is Tara Wells our mother? Yes. Hey, come on, sis. Hey, it's okay. She's alive. Hey, come on, Sam. Let's go. Dennis, what's the quickest way I can reach you? Well, there's no phone. They're isolated. Well, how about a plane? Eden has its own airstrip. Dr. Marshall, we're coming with you. Yes, please. Please. Okay. Come on, Katie, I can do that. Just leave it to me, Sam. You'll have a heart attack. Oh, that'll be the day. There's too much work to be done. I know what's bothering you. Will you just let me be, Sam, and get on with it?
Morning, Caddy. Beautiful day. Where's Miss Wells, do you know? She had a late breakfast and rode out to Devil's Rock. She asked me not to wake you. How the hell she know about Devil's Rock? I told her. That was stupid. It's a three-hour ride. She could get lost. If anything happens to her, I'm going to hold you personally responsible. King. making love to her. I'm going to the police, because I just don't care anymore. So I want to see you suffer. Okay. Get out of here! Drive to Darwin, give it to Jim Gully at the police station. Nobody else, only Jim. Tell him not to stop for anything. Who?
Was it worth it, Jilly? God, don't tell me you've forgotten my voice already. Haven't we been best friends since we were kids? No. How could you do it, Jilly? No! I loved you. We were like sisters. You were a part of my life. I trusted you. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Was Greg really worth all that pain? Stop. That guilt? Uh, I'm not cool, Chili. He betrayed both of us, didn't he? First me. the police. I didn't want it to happen. Steph, I didn't mean for it to be so horrible.
Where's Tara? I said, where's Tara? Don't hurt me, please. What have you told her? Nothing. I haven't even seen her. Honestly. But, but Greg, Greg Stephanie was here. I heard her so clearly. The ghost is here in this house. I am well, I'm not your lousy bastard. You hit it all. Where is she? I don't know, and I don't care. Keep away from her, or I'll kill you. Greg, I, I really did hear Stephanie's voice. I'm, I'm not making it up. Who else knows you're here apart from the pilot? Did you tell anyone else before you left? No, no not a soul, I swear. No, no, please, no. I assure you, Jilly, I'm no ghost. What's the matter, Greg? Nothing to say? <sighs> you really thought you'd done it, didn't you? I was dragged from that swamp by an old hermit. I was half dead. Grotesque, but alive. I stayed with him until I'd healed and could walk again. He gave me his life savings. So I went to a clinic. There was a very good doctor there. A plastic surgeon. I spent six months being turned into somebody else. It was hard. It was painful. But my God, it was worth it. And during all that time, I thought and I thought and I ate myself up with hatred and rage. Oh, it would have been just so easy to go to the police and tell them who I was and have you two charged with attempted murder. Oh, no. I wanted to destroy you! The way you destroyed me. How could you do it? The two people I loved most. The magnificent irony of the whole thing is that you two have been responsible for me discovering who I am. And for that, at least, I thank you. Tara. The police know everything. They'll be here soon. The game is over, Greg. <laughs>
Tara. I didn't trust her from the start. It's always you. Remember how we used to make love? How used to make you feel? You remember how good it was? You remember?
Come here, Steph. Come here. I got something for you. Show yourself, I'm gonna shoot your horse. Do you hear me, Stephanie? I'm gonna shoot your stinging horse!
wait a minute, please. I can't believe it. When I got you nutted, I thought someone was having me on. Then I took it down to Harper Mining and checked the handwriting. Aren't the media gonna have a field day with this one? Thanks for coming, Jim. Welcome home, Miss Harper. Patriotów z Harrisonem Fordem w roli agenta Jacka Ryana.